Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Well, I'm sure by now, most of y'all, I'm all, you know, it's, 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 it's not really telling a lot of us anything we didn't know. And I'm speaking of Mary Trump. Donald Trump's niece and the book that she wrote, uh, what was the name of it? Um, something about how my family created the world's most dangerous or the world's, yeah, the world's most dangerous man. Um, if people still vote for Donald Trump after this, um, then, you know, it's on them. Because... Um, there's nothing else I can say. Uh, she says she heard her uncle use the N-word and anti-Semitic slurs and says it should be no surprise considering how racist he is today. And I admit, Mary Trump said of her family that it was normal to hear them use the N-word or use anti-Semitic expressions. Um, the niece of President Trump, Mary, is promoting her new book, she said her uncle is clearly racist, which is part of his upbringing. But Mary Trump said the president also engages in racism to score him points with the only people who are continuous to, to support him. Um, she said her uncle always continuously uses the N-word, anti-Semitic slurs, and speaking to Rachel Maddow on MSNBC, she said, of course I did. I don't think that should surprise anybody, given how, how verbally he is racist he is today. Mary Trump had earlier said in the new interview about her blockbuster book that her family engaged in casual bigotry throughout her childhood. Growing up, uh, it was sort of normal to hear them use the N-word, she said. Uh, she said the president is clearly racist, uh, which she said was both a product of his upbringing, but also politically motivated. Pressured by Maddow, she, if she had heard the president use the N-word or a Semitic slur, Mary replied, yes. The White House has called Mary's allegations uh, a book, a book of falsehoods, adding that the president doesn't use those type of words. But he did say all Mexicans were rapists. So y'all do remember that, correct? Okay. She told the Post that she hasn't been surprised by the president's racist language nor his policies, including separating children from their parents at the southern border. No, the more divisive, the better, the cooler, she said. It comes easily to him, and he thinks he's going to score more points with the only people who are continuing to support him. So that's what he's going to do. She described what her family engaged in as knee-jerk anti-Semitism and knee-jerk racism. Homophobia was never an issue because nobody ever talked about gay people in her family. Well, until my grandmother called Elton John an anti-gay slur. The antidote was one of many memorable moments in Mary Trump's new book, Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. In the book, she describes her grandmother Mary calling the choice to have John see at the funeral of Princess Diana a disgrace and said that he was a little six-letter slur. Damn. A grandmother? Oh, I guess that's like me. Huh? My God. She said that led to her decision not to come out to her family. Mary Trump was secretly engaged to a woman, but had to push back her wedding because her grandfather, Fred Trump, had died. She recounts her grandfather using terms like Jew me down. She said her father, Freddie Trump, who died at the age of 43, in 1981, after suffering from alcoholism, joined the historical Jewish fraternity 
Sigma Alpha Mu as a young man and pondered in the book whether it was a conscious rebuke of Fred Williams' anti-Semitism. She described President Trump's 2016 campaign as being racist several times in the book. He did tap into a certain bigotry and incoherent rage, which he's always been good at doing, she wrote, pointing to the 1989 cover of New York when the president took out um, demanding that the Central Park Five be executed. Mary Trump wrote about the Department of Justice case that accused Fred Trump Sr. and President Trump of not renting apartments to black people, though she called them allegations because she didn't have evidence to back them up. While not mentioned in the book, there's been long speculation that Trump used N-words behind the scenes during the filming of The Apprentice, but the tapes have never surfaced. She also recalled the odd scene at Ivanka Trump's wedding to Jared Kushner, when Kushner's father, who had been released from prison three years prior, spoke about how when Jared first introduced him to Ivanka, he had thought she would never ever be good enough to join the family. It was only after she committed to convert to Judaism and worked hard to make it happen that he began to think that she might be worthy of them after all. Mary Trump world. The off. The author took offense to this, adding, considering what Charles has been convicted of, hiring a prostitute to seduce his brother-in-law, taping their illicit encounter, and then sending a recording to his sister at the nephew's engagement party, I found his condescension a bit out of line. Ivanka Trump and Jerry's Trump wedding marked the first time Mary Trump had been seen her living aunts and uncles in over 10 years after her grandfather and then grandmother cut Mary Trump and her brothers out of their wills since their father has died. Dang. It kicked off Mary Trump having a closer relationship with her oldest aunt, Marianne, who's quoted in parts of the book. She also said that led her to the decision to write um, to visit the White House in 2017, as the family was celebrating Aunt Marianne and Elizabeth's birthday. Mm -mm. Still, Mary Trump had been a Hillary Clinton supporter and said she would vote for Joe Biden this time around. She told the Post that she didn't think her cousin Ivanka was enough of a steadying force in the administration. She doesn't do anything. She spouts Brahmi's on uh, social media, but either she tries to uh, behave and impact and fails, or just isn't interested in having an impact. I can't think of one thing she's done to show she's a moderate or a moderate influence. And so she decided to make her own mark by putting a book out a mere four months before the voters head to the polls. I've seen enough in the last few years to know that no one thing is going to make a bit of difference, she told the Post. This is going to be, using the expression loosely, death by a thousand lashes, right? And maybe in this case it's going to. It's going to take a million lashes or more about adding the record of egregious things that have happened and for which there has been no accountability. But more than that, she said, I also feel a responsibility to make sure that the people are as informed as possible when November comes, because I do not believe that that was the case in 2016. When asked what will happen if her uncle wins a second term, she told the paper, well, I'll just may be in the Caribbean. Wow. And that's what she thinks of her uncle. Wow, you guys. I see you 